Hey everyone, we're here at the VMware booth and we're talking a little bit more about the management announcement that VMware has done this week. Um, I'm here with Naomi and Naomi's going to show us a little bit more about the vCloud Automation Center. Naomi, what do you do at VMware? Well, I do as little as possible, but that actually translates into being a product manager on the vCloud Automation Suite. Um, Automation Center product. Okay, well perfect, that sounds like the right person for us to know more about the Cloud Automation Center product. Can you tell us a little bit more about what is what is Cloud Automation Center? What do customers sure. use it for? Sure, so customers today use Cloud Automation Center to stand up infrastructure and platform as a service. The new, the, the, the new release will allow us to basically do that and also anything as a service. So what we've done in this release is we've actually gone, gone ahead and gotten a brand new consumption UI, so you have this the same consumption UI regardless of what it is you're requesting. So you've got that same interaction and so on, and it's just it's easy to use, right? Go to one place, a single throw to choke, get your stuff, request it, have it approved, provision it, manage it. Okay, well that sounds good. So I can do all this automation, all the automation for the environment, yeah. I can do infrastructure, I can do platforms, applications, yeah. everything? Yeah, and even I can do it. <laughs> well, that's perfect. So you mentioned anything as a service. Right. What does that entail? So anything as a service is whatever you need to stand up cloud services wise for your business. So for example, you might want to stand up networking as a service, or you might want to stand up um, user management as a service, or desktop as a service. Anything that's not offered out of the box, right? So for example, again, you want to make sure that you have this one place for your folks to go to get stuff. They know they can get it consistently, and you do it here through the catalog. Perfect, so cloud automation, process automation, it all sounds very good. What is a typical customer that's, that should be interested in? Is there a typical size that a customer needs to have in the amount of virtual machines? Or? So, it's, so it's interesting because we, we have customers who have a couple of hundred VMs and we have customers who have hundreds of thousands of VMs, right? So it really depends on what it is you're trying to deliver to your business, right? So if you want to have this single place to go and you want to put some governance around the cloud, absolutely this is the right thing to do, right? Because you have the ability to go ahead and decide who gets access to what, when they have access to it, do they need approvals? And then when it's provisioned, what can they do after the fact, right? So if you want to go ahead and make sure that your users have a place to request, but also make sure that your admins can do, go and do more interesting things, you can absolutely delegate down the authority to request and manage to the users that need it, but within bounds and put some constraints around them. Okay, sounds like a very broad use of scenario, so good for many customers. Um, it sounds all very good, but we're here at the demo pod. Okay. Can you show us something? Sure, no problem. So what we have here is we have the, the service catalog, and we actually saw this on main stage this morning. So this is where Kit went ahead and requested um, the application to be stood up for Carl. So as you can see here, we've got the old services. We've got everything that this user, this lead developer user is allowed to request. We can navigate down through the different services, and again, these are configurable, right? And we can see that, for example, in the infrastructure, these are the items that I'm allowed to request. Whereas if I choose platform, I get different things, if I choose storage, and so on, right? But again, what's key about this, for example, is that regardless of what you request and where it comes from, whether it's coming from vSphere, from KVM, from AWS, from VCHS, it's the same UI, the same experience, the same types of questions, right? And quite frankly, I as a user don't need to know where it's being placed. Right? Exactly. All I need to know is, yep, I need it to be PCI compliant, or it needs to have four processors, or it needs to have a particular OS. That's all I need to know, right? Again, you come here, you decide what it is you want to you, you want to request. So, for example, maybe I want to request my um, my Windows. So what will happen is it'll pop the form, right? I'll enter the reason why I need it. Mine is because I can, because it's all about me. Right? That's a good reason. Yeah, of course. And you follow the wizard just like you do with everything else, right? And it says, okay, what is it that I actually need, need to request here? So for example, this particular blueprint says that I can have between 10 and 30 days of a lease. I can have maximum of, of two CPUs and the max memory I can have is two, right? So I can go ahead and I can change this or I can just say, yep, this is exactly what I want. Let me go ahead and submit it. So I can submit this, it'll go ahead and submit the request, and then the approval engine will review the request and see if it needs approvals. If it needs approvals, it'll send those approvals out. Um, if it doesn't, it'll just go ahead and do the provisioning. Right, so it's really kind of cool to be, actually to be able to have that, regardless of what I want, come to this place, get it, and let the approval engine manage if I'm allowed to actually provision it without anybody saying yes or no. Exactly, and this will give a lot of speed to companies rolling out new ideas, oh new go-to-marketing time is just improving Absolutely. immensely. Absolutely, if you think about it, how much of an admin's time is spent talking to the users and provisioning machines? Who wants to do that? It's kind of a bit mindless. Yeah. 
right? Well, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to do it, right? However, I would want to give those users the authority to request the stuff that they're entitled to and just give it to them through a UI to do that, right? Absolutely, and it allows your, your basic admins to do the stuff that they really need to be doing yeah. and not do the basic and, stuff. And to be interested in it, right? To learn new stuff, to come up with good strategies to actually you know, make sure that IT is a partner for the business, right? Exactly. And not a bottleneck or an overhead, right? Exactly. A business enabler instead of just a cost factor. Uh, absolutely. So in addition to that, right, so for example, you can see where your request is in the life cycle, so maybe it is pending approval, as this one is here. So the approval goes to whomever, just like it did for Carl this morning, and you approve it or you reject it, you move on. Once the item is actually provisioned, again, I as the user can see all of my stuff, right? So I'm not the admin, I'm just a, I'm a developer or a QE person. I can decide, I can see my stuff, and then I can interact with it, right? So again, Lots of requests to the admin after machines are provisioned is to do things like, you know, power it on, power it off, maybe add things to it or whatever. So again, we get the option to delegate that down to me, the requester, and allow me, for example, to do things like suspend the machine, power it off, power it on, reconfigure, and all of those sorts of things, right? So again, take the mundane away from the admin, let them delegate down the stuff that I'm, in, that I, that I'm it's possible for me to do, and let me manage it myself. Right. Perfect. So you, man, you you said that the user can see his own stuff. Does yeah. that mean it's fully multi-tenant aware? Or? Absolutely. So, good question, right? So this is absolutely a tenanted system, right? So if you see here, I'm in the Rainpole service catalog. I could just as easily, on the same instance, instance be in the VMware catalog, be branded for me, I'll have my own permissions and so on. And actually, what's interesting about that is that each tenant can manage their own stuff, right? So I'm a tenant admin, I want to manage my branding, that's cool, I can do that. Let me go in as that tenant admin, actually. They can manage their own branding, right, that's great. But they can also do things like manage their own entitlements, their own catalog items, their own services, and build their own approval policies. So if you think about it, you can actually give the business the ability to manage what their people can and can't do, and the approval policies and so on. Full freedom within one management interface for each customer or a business unit that you have. Again, and again, it's not just for infrastructure, it's for platform, for anything as a service, right? So if we talk about anything as a service, I as a, I as a tenant admin or as a service architect have the ability to create services that I can stand up for my, for my users, and they don't have to be infrastructure based, right? So if you think about it, the new hire, the onboarding process, you know, creating an Active Directory user, those sorts of things, right? So for example, you can see here that in my service blueprints, I can create a service blueprint, just like an infrastructure item, and make it available to request, right? So I have the ability to choose the workflow, map the attributes, and create that input form so that I have that uniform experience, just like I do on infrastructure and platform. Perfect. Well, sounds like a really, really good solution. If there's any more information that people want, should they just go to the VMware website and search for a particular name, vCloud Automation Center? VCloud Automation Center, coming soon. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.